Okay, as quick as I can, this is uh, res uh, resource reservation in Earl Mud. If I have two processes, let's say I have a sword and I have a fireball. Let's see some of these nice colors. So I have a, a fireball spell, and, and all circles are processes. Earl Mud does not communicate back and forth directly. So I will not have the swords and fireball a message saying, hey, I'm attacking and I need so much stamina. How much do you need? And, you know, who attack first? And then wait for fireball to return. The way it works is um, Earl Mud is just this huge graph of processes. And let's say this is the sword process here. And let's say this is the fireball process here and sword will send off this message and it'll go all the way through the graph eventually reaching the fireball and then that will traverse the rest of the graph until eventually it reaches back to the sword well if you're asking questions in the mud then that's a long way to go about it and if you have let's say 10 different attacks that all need to coordinate together then sending messages through the graph like this um, to try and coordinate is just going to be a nightmare so what i did it's, it was fairly obvious once i thought about it um, is I would have uh, resource properties, or processes rather. So I would have like a mana process that would manage mana resources, and I would have, say, a, um, let's say, uh, a stamina. Um, can't keep up with me here. I would have a stamina process, and so what I'll do is... Um, when fireball, uh, when an attack starts, the fireball process for a character will say, hey, listen, I need some mana. I am process 0 0.1.0, and I need um, 10 mana, and I also need a little bit of stamina to cast a spell, and so I am 0 0.1.0, and I only need 2 stamina. And then sword will also register with stamina and say, hey, listen, I am 0 0.2.0, and I need... Uh, 10 stamina to swing the sword. So now we're going to have some lists of reservations. So mana is going to have um, a list of reservations. This is a tuple and it's going to have you know, 0 0.1.0 0 needs 10 stamina or, or mana rather and that's going to be all that needs that and then stamina is going to have a list that says um, 0 0.1 1.0 needs 2. Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. There we go. It's still terrible, but better. And then uh, 0.2.0 needs 10. So now I have these reservations. And now what these processes will do is they'll have a clock. Um, you know, uh, it'll send a tick, like send after or whatever. And you know, when it gets to a certain time, it will update how much it's current. Um, you know, it'll have a, um, a uh, per tick amount that it gets every, every time it ticks over. Say, so, you know, you get five stamina per tick. And then it'll have a current amount. So it'll add um, current plus per tick. And then it will know how much it has now. And then we'll start to allocate those. And so... Um, what we'll do when we allocate is if we, you know, this one needs two stamina. So if we get per tick, if we get five, we'll allocate some of that five to uh, 0 0.1.0, which was the fireball. And we'll say, okay, great. So now that's three. And now you are allocated. So I can actually send off an allocation to the fireball to say, hey, listen, you just got, um, you just got two stamina. And then the fireball can do whatever it needs to do, knowing it has that um, has that much reserve. And now this, you go to the back of the line, and this will become first. So now this one needed 10, so we have 3, so we'll allocate the 3, so this becomes 0, and now this becomes 7. We only need 7 left. And so um, I think that's something like that. Anyway, so then now Fireball, when it starts getting back um, its stamina and sword and whatnot, like um, sword just needs 10 stamina. When they get it back, they'll say, you know, how much do I need? Um, um, so sword says, well, I needed, I, I needed 10 stamina. 
So when he gets this um, from stamina, when it gets this message back saying, hey, here's your 10 stamina, it'll check and see, hey, how much I need, how much I got, do I have enough? And do I have enough of all of my resources? If so, then I can attack. So what does the code look like? The code, let's say, let's do, um, there's a tick. So these, um, these uh, processes will tick over. They'll listen for their own ticks and they'll have a reference in case there's a stale tick, a tick got canceled, and, uh, but there was already one um, sent out. It'll look at its properties and say, you know, is this a valid tick? If so, yes, succeed it and tell me what happens. And then once, if it completely succeeds and we get notified of the success, then we'll say, um, you know, I somebody uh, did a tick with this reference with account. And if that somebody is me, then I want to get what I currently had. I want to get what the maximum I can carry in my pool. I want to find out how much I have now, which is the count that I got from the tick and plus what I already had. And I want to take the minimum of that or max. So if I'm already at, you know, if I was at 99 stamina, I can have 100 and I got, you know, 10 in my account, then I'm not going to go to 109. I'm just going to go up to 100. I'm going to take my per tick amount that I had, my tick time, and re-grab those from the properties in case they've gotten updated since the last tick. I'm going to look at the reservations that I have and I'm going to start applying those reservations. So what does that look like? Um, we're going to take the reservations we had plus the new amount of this thing. If we don't have any reservations and we're at the maximum, then we'll just return that. We don't need to do anything else. Otherwise, if we're not at maximum and we know we have reservations and I know I need to, I'm going to need to kick off another tick, so I'll do that. My new tick time I just grabbed, uh, myself, I'm going to send this message to myself and the message is, self, I want you to tick with this reference and I want you to um, add this much, which is your per tick amount. Then we're going to grab the type of this resources from the props, and we're going to allocate that type um, to the reservations. Um, so we're all, where did the type come from? Uh, type. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Oh, type, yeah, right here, type. So we're going to allocate this type to the reservations. I don't know why we need type. Um, so allocate says take this type. Um, oh, because we need to know what type we are because we're going to send an allocation to the processes that requested us and send, tell us what type we are. So we're, of our reservations, we're going to take the first one off the list, which is a proc, like we saw. You know, For Fireball, this was 0 0.1.0. And Fireball required, let's say if it was Stamina, Fireball required um, 2. So this will be Fireball 2, and we'll take what's available. Now what's available is what we found... Um, uh, when we did allocate, we said the type, the reservations, and new. Well, new comes in as available. So the new amount is what's the resource that we have now available. We're going to, if available is greater than what is required for this next process reservation on the list, and that was Fireball uh, 2, if we have more than or equal to 2, then we can actually allocate that. So we'll say, hey, attempt, make an attempt, send it to Fireball, and the event is allocate two of stamina to firewall. And then we're going to take that, um, uh, we're going to rotate those reservations. So we're going to take that one off the head of the list and put it on the end of the list. So now you've been, the firewall has had its uh, its requirement for two stamina um, met. So it's now going into the list. The next one on the head of the list will be, uh, we'll get the next available resources. And if we had ticked over with more than we needed for um, just uh, fireball stamina, then we will send the, we'll take what was required for stamina, subtract it from what was available, and then call this again with the rotated reservations, the type. So this would be um, stamina, and this would be whatever with fireball on the end, whoever's next will be on the head, and however much is left after allocating to fireball. If we don't have enough, then we'll just send back what other reservations, the uh, rotated reservations, so what, whoever didn't get met, their needs met, will be on the head of the list, and however much we had available. So if this one needed five, we only had four left available, we'll still have four. And then if we get in, you know, if our next tick was even one, then we'll have enough to fill that reservation next time. So we took our reservations and new, and we did this um, allocate, and then that got us back the rotated reservations and however much we have left. So we delete our reservations and we delete our current, and then we reset them. So current is now whatever we had left after doing our allocations, and reservations is our rotated reservations, and we toss it on the end of the other props. And so now we have done our tick. We have added um, a certain amount of resource, and then we have allocated that out, um, checked to see if we can send any allocation events based on how much we got for that tick. Here is how we reserve. So a process like we saw, say uh, sword will reserve 
um, for uh, 10 stamina and it'll pass in its own um, PID. So we can see um, we had an owner, some process is reserving a certain amount of uh, us with our PID for themselves or for actually it's our character we're reserving a certain amount of us for a attack process and we're just matching up. We know if the event came in um, uh, to our character because we can use this parents uh, record to see if it's um, if the owner is a character and a, a resource will be owned by a character. If that happens, then succeed and then uh, notify us um, of, of the result of this after it makes its way through the graph. Uh, we can also do an unreserve. Uh, if we have, if it comes in and it's a character and we have this character in our properties, we are a resource, we know who our character is. And then if we have that, we can, uh, this will succeed and notify us of what, um, what the rest of the graph says about it. And if we got this reserve, we reserved an amount of us for a particular process. And we don't care about the character anymore. We've already verified this is our character. Otherwise, we wouldn't be getting this event. Then we can sit, get our reservations and default to empty. And we can say if this process and amount, so like um, sword and an amount, is a member of our reservations, then we just want to return that because we've already registered the sword for 10. Uh, interesting problem here, if we reserve a sword for 10 and we reserve the sword for 11, then we would get two reservations in here. So if we don't have that reservation already, then we will add that reservation to the list of reservations on the end. And then we will delete the existing reservations and add this new property onto the front of the list of properties. And succeed always returns the new properties. And that gets assigned to props2, and then we do update tick with props2. So remember, this is the Earl Mud resource reservation. We're going to do update tick. Grab ourselves, um, grab our current reservations, uh, because we did update tick with props, our new props, and so we have that. So grab the new reservations from the props, make a new, either if get the value of the tick, it'll be a reference from the properties, otherwise it's undefined. Figure out how much we should update our um, uh, resource by, how much we should add to our resource per tick. And then if we have reservations and a valid tick, if it's an invalid tick, then we need to make a new one. So we make a new ref and kick off a new tick with per tick uh, because we have reservations now. This is saying our reservations list is not empty. Otherwise, if our reservations list is empty, then we uh, delete the tick that we had. And so if there was an existing tick that was going to um, be fired off, like we had a, um, um, if this attempt hasn't made it through the graph yet, we've kicked one off and it's still waiting to go through, we can delete it and then it won't have that ref and then we'll know that it was stale. So that's what we saw in this thing here. If we had a stale, we had a stale tick. We had kicked off a tick, but then um, we had stopped attacking for whatever reason and stopped needing that resource. So now we have Earl Mud Handler item attack. Uh, we're gonna have um, an attempt that's gonna fire, uh, where is this? To, um, let's see here, attack, allocate. Uh, there's gonna be this um, attempt to allocate some amount of, of this particular type of resource to ourselves, and if that matches us, then then some resources is telling us that we've been allocated a resource. So we say, yep, that should succeed. Let me know what the um, overall result of this is after the graph has its way with it. And then we'll see down here, this allocation, succeed, props attacker, counter attack, attack, allocate. So if, if the graph says, yep, that event succeeds, nobody blocked it, then we'll get this allocate amount of type of resource to self, where self is us. Then we wanna say, uh, update the allocated amounts. So take that amount that we were just allocated and the type and our properties and figure out now how much of all the different resources we have allocated. So if we needed, for instance, um, sword needed both, or no, let's say fireball needed both mana and stamina. So this is gonna say, go through all the different resources we need with this resource allocation we just got and see what we have now. And um, required, um, so we update a map of, of what we've been allocated. Then we find out what has what we require. So in this case, we need um, we needed two mana, uh, no, sorry, two stamina and ten mana. And then we figure out if we have enough. 
Do we have, um, have we been allocated everything that we're required? So we call has resources to do that. And has resources is a little bit confusing. It's down here. Um, it says apply the resources that we have to what's required. So essentially saying, take everything we've um, allocated and find out what's required and see if there's anything missing. So for everyone that's required, if you require 10, we've been allocated two, then now we know for that type of resource, we, we still need eight. So we are still lacking eight for that thing. So that's what apply resource does. It says um, for each type of resource, take our map of allocated resources and take find out the allocated, um, what's been allocated to that type and then subtract that allocated amount from the required. So now we have, say, stamina, we our mana. Let's say we required 10 and we had two. So required was 10, allocated was two. We still have eight, so mana, eight. And then we put that on the end of the list of, um, on the front of the list of, uh, we're building up a list of um, required amounts that we have now applied allocated amounts to to get this new applied list. And we're gonna pass back allocated. We set that type to zero. And so we've, we've allocated everything from that type and passed back the new um, list of required resource amounts that have had their um, allocations applied to them. And then we go over is, uh, we map is resource lacking over those um, allocations that like uh, alloc applied. So the, the required resources that have had the allocations applied. So this, this is the, um, this is the accumulator here. So this is the second element in the accumulator tuple and we pull that out here, and then we uh, we do a filter with is resource lacking over that list of uh, required resources that have had their allocations applied to them. And all it does is say, if there is any one that has an amount that is um, uh, not, like, so if the amount is equal to or less than zero, then you're fine, you are not lacking. So is resource lacking? False. But if you still need an amount that is greater than zero, then we are lacking that particular resource. And so if we come back with no resources that have resources lacking, then has resources is true. We have everything we need. To, we have all the mana and all the stamina we need to kick off this attack. Otherwise false. We are still waiting for something. And then we'll go back up to wherever that was. So we'd say um, has resources. So we either said, yes, we have been allocated everything we need that was required. If so, we're gonna kick off an attack, and then we are going to deallocate um, all of the allocated um, amounts from whatever, we're gonna take whatever was required and deallocate that from whatever we've been allocated, which highlights a little bit of a problem. If I'm getting stamina like gangbusters, and I'm waiting a long time for mana, then I'm gonna be soaking up stamina that other processes could be using, and there's no point for me to start hogging all that stamina um, and and blocking it when I'm still waiting for mana. So I probably need to add something where if if I already have enough of that resource, then I refuse it because I don't need it. And I wait until I, you know, I just, I just take enough of these resources until I have all of it, and then I can um, kick off my attack. And meanwhile, other things can use it. So there's no point building up 100 stamina to use my, to use my spells and only one per spell um, when I have a sword sitting there that's, you know, it's getting um, stamina trickling in. That shouldn't be too big of a problem because of the way we allocate resources. We allocate some to the first thing in the list and then some to the next thing in the list. So once you get allocated once, you go to the end of the list. But even so, um, we should kind of stay at the end of the list if we're not, if we're not being used. So, you know, instead of having um, the fireball rotate to the front of the list and get more stamina, we could, the fireball could say, no, I don't need it. Put me back on the end of the list again. And then the sword could come up and get that. And so the sword could attack much faster instead of waiting, um, having to wait for a fireball to um, stockpile all the stamina that it's not going to need. Um, right. So that was deallocate. That's down here. Uh, deallocate says fold, subtract required over the, um, I think this is the, um, accumulator and this is the list so go over all the requireds and use this as the accumulator subtract required here's your type from required and how much is required and the map of allocated so we're going to take that type out of the map find out how much was allocated and then say allocated now for that type is the minimum of zero or the amount minus however much was required because we've done an attack so we had X amount of stamina and we did attack required two. So we'll subtract two from however much that was, X minus two. 
And now if that's still greater than zero, then we'll, that, that will be our new allocated amount. So if we did an attack that, you know, we had 100 stamina sitting around, we only needed two, well then our, our we'll still have 98 um, uh, stamina allocated for that um, type. So we'll still have, yeah, 98 stamina allocated. And that is how um, resource allocation works with Erlen.